Hello and welcome along to That's Good for Footy. We used to be a live and interactive footy panel show. This is where the fans used to meet the players and the players used to meet the fans. None of that's going to be happening for a little while, but in the meantime, I'll be still giving you access to the players via this medium. This show was already described as not being your typical footy panel show. Now it's definitely, uh, it's definitely not. Uh, let's get on with it. Um, this is our ninth home ISO show with Damo. If you could please welcome to the show a man who is honing his craft down back he has now won two premierships at his football club. He was born on the 15th of April 1993, which actually means his birthday is in, what, nine days. Uh, he has played a total of 54 games and he's kicked a total of one goal. He made his AFL debut back in 2016. When he plays for the Richmond Football Club, he wears the number... 35! There you go, on his back. Could you please welcome to the show, Nathan Broad. Hi, <laughs> Damo. G'day, mate. How's this? It's, it's, uh, um, sorry, I try to contain myself each time. It's just bloody funny doing this from your lounge room and speaking to you and yours. So I did just want to say to you, mate, firstly, thanks for having us into your house. Thanks for um, allowing us to have this chat with you. Um, the Richmond fans are going to love it, just to know that they've had a little bit of uh, insight into what you've been up to. Uh, and I will ask you that. How are you going, mate? How, is, how are things going on a personal level? How are you dealing with everything? Uh, yeah, I'm going. I'm actually going really well. I'm going yeah. good. Um, good. I've been finding things to do to keep me busy. Yeah. Um, I've been training with Kane Lambert um, at Princess Park in twos, obviously, yeah. um, which is good. And yeah, the club gave us a fair few weights each to, to take home. So yeah. I've been doing workouts from home. Um, and yeah, I've got a lot of DIY projects similar to Camden um, that I've been nailing our way at. So. No, Beautiful. I'm going for good at the moment. That's good. We'll go through all of those things as, uh, as the show progresses and find out how, how you're dealing with things in a day-to-day -day act, uh, activities and life in general. Uh, just to explain to the fans what we're actually doing here is it's a show that I just wanted to do in order to give people that are in home isolation, because everyone should be, as we know, um, a way of feeling connected again, because um, it's pretty boring and can be quite sad out there. So this is our way of just giving a little bit back. Uh, again, why I thank you for being part of it. Uh, let's get stuck in, mate. This is our first segment. It's proudly brought to you by the Big Picture people, the experts in home cinema. It's called The Big Picture. Let's get the big picture on what's been happening with you. Pictures of you, pictures of me. <laughs> Uh, let's have some fun, mate. Um, let's get the big picture on what's happening and how this makes you feel. We need to go back a little bit in time. It seems like an eternity ago, March the 19th, leading up to round one, which was uh, obviously the game with uh, Richmond versus Colt at the MCG, normally a, a, a game that would pull 80,000 80, plus. Um, you guys are, are getting ready to come out onto the ground. You're going to play your first game. Round one, tell me what were you thinking about as you were driving to the ground on that night, on that Thursday night? Um, yeah, I don't know. It was a bit weird um, trying to think how the season's going to pan out and um, would we only play one game, would we play two? Um, I was pretty interested to see what the G would be like with no crowd. I was a bit excited, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, to see what it was like running out in front of no one. And um, yeah, at least I can say I've done it now, which never thought I would. That's it. It's, it'd be like... Uh, one of those things where someone says, "Oh, can you if you can you remember your first game? If you if that was your first game, you'll never forget it for the rest of your life." No, definitely that, not. That's outrageous. Hey, um, for you, just personally, and these are all questions just personally for you. How did you feel running up the race? What was, um, what was the yeah? It was like? Actually, um, well, once that we ran out of the race and started to warm up, um, you kind of forgot about the crowd, obviously not being there, and all the other things that we couldn't control. Um, and you actually didn't think about it too much. We were just too focused on the game. Yeah. Um, but at the quarter time, three quarter time puddles when, um, yeah, especially the third quarter huddle when we got a little bit of a spray from Dimmer. Um, yeah, you could definitely, it was a bit <laughs> weird. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, so that was a bit weird in that. But um, I actually enjoyed the no crowd side of it, being able to hear each other um, clearly and with our structure and that, it made it a lot easier than playing in front of 80,000. It's fantastic you say that because I've had Shane Edwards on the show. I've had Jack Higgins on the show. Jack obviously didn't play in round one. I spoke with Dylan Grimes about it. Uh, we've got Tom Lynch coming up later. Um, it's always just great to get the players' thoughts and opinions and a little bit of insight. But everyone has said exactly the same thing that you just did, is that it was fantastic being able to hear each other and, and you know, uh, speak about things. Dylan was saying he could actually bag the opposition um, backman down the other end of the ground and you could, you could literally hear him. 
Yeah, you could say whatever you wanted. You have to be careful. Um, sometimes when there's 80,000, you can throw the odd swear word out and get away with it. But um, yeah, you could definitely hear everything in echo. So you hear it three times. Wow, that's unbelievable. <laughs> hey, um, I just want to paint a picture for you, mate. Give us the overall feeling. We know how this, this plays out as fans, but for you... We know when the umpire stands there, he puts a whistle in his mouth, he holds the ball aloft, the siren goes, and the crowd roars, and then the ball gets bounced. And then all of a sudden, what was that like for you? Um, oh, it was disappointing not having the Tiger Army there. They obviously get us through most weeks. But, um, yeah, like once I said before, once the game started, you yeah. just forgot about it all completely and you were too focused on the game. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, was, it would be nice to get the Tiger Army back, that's for sure. Absolutely. Um, and, and just one more question pertaining to that is, at the end of the game, you guys got up, you got out of the blocks exceptionally well. Um, it was a fantastic game for the Richmond Football Club. What was it like when the siren actually went, though? Um, yeah, it was a bit of the unknown, I think. We yeah. didn't know whether we'd be playing again next week. We didn't even know where we got. It was meant to play on Thursday, but there was potential to be play on Tuesday or Monday. Mm. Um, do we not play at all? So, yeah, it was a bit of an eerie feeling um, between both teams, really. But, um, yeah, our club's so professional, the way we go about it. We went back and did our recovery and prepared to play um, until we got, yeah, the final word that we weren't. And which leads me to this next part, is now the decision has been made to postpone the season, are you optimistic that you'll be back playing anything, anything in 2020? Oh, yeah, I'd like to stay optimistic that there will be a season. I think um, if there's not, it's yeah going to be very detrimental to the AFL. And mm. um, I don't really want to think what will happen if there's no games this year. Um, so, yeah, I'm being <laughs> optimistic um, that we can get back out there, even if it is in front of no fans, yeah. um, get the game going again, get people watching footy and get it back. I think it would be a great thing for the country. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Hey, where were you when you actually found out that the season was postponed? Can you remember where you were? Uh, yeah, I was here at home, um, okay. and, um, yeah, a few boys just started, um, uh, we got a few of us on a Snapchat group and we okay. had the, um, Snapchat, similar to Zoom now where you have five, six faces going, there's about yeah. 10 of us. Oh yeah. I remember we all just walked to the fridge and just cracked a beer and <laughs> sat there and <laughs> talked shit for a bit saying, yeah, oh, right. what you and had a few beers and, um, yeah, a few of us caught up and had a couple of beers. Oh, good. Um, just to, yeah, talk about what's going on in that. But, yeah, it was a bit weird. Can you take a consensus? What was the overall feeling amongst the group? Oh, uh, we, we know for the for the bigger picture it had to be done probably. Yep. Uh, yeah, but it is obviously sad that footy has to go away when it's such a big um, cultural thing in mm. Australia. But, yeah, for the bigger picture, we, we understand it's got to go away for a little bit, but... Hopefully, if everyone can do the right thing and follow the rules, um, the quicker they do that, we can get back out there and get footy going again. Well said, mate. Well said. Hey, what is your f focus with footy at the moment? What are you doing um, in relation to where's your head at with football? Um, yeah, I'm still, like I said before, the club's been great. They've given us the whole gym to bring home. So each player got given a certain amount of things. So I've got a little gym set up here at home which I'm still training as a normal program. Um, and then, yeah, footy-wise, I'm running at Princess Park while we're still there outside um, most mornings. And um, while I can still kick a footy, I'm still kicking. So not a hell of a lot's changed okay. uh, fitness-wise. Just I'm doing it with one other person instead of 44 yeah. other people. <laughs> it was interesting. I had to um, uh, pick up some stock business-related. It was uh, business-related. Um, I had to go all the way over to Brunswick and uh, uh, I'm in the uh, southeastern suburbs of Melbourne and by the time I got over there, I, I actually drove past Princess Park. I, I, I thought there was a marathon going on. I have <laughs> never seen that many people out walking around Princess Park. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it's been chockers lately. Like, Kane, we go there all the time normally and yeah. um, it's never like that. But, yeah, lately, while everyone's allowed to go out and exercise, uh, it's one of the reasons you're allowed to leave the house. Yeah. Um, you're making the most of it. It's pretty good to see everyone out there uh, exercising. It puts a smile on their face, I think. So, yeah, it's good while you can do it. Absolutely. Um, just to speak of, I know that you said you've taken away some gym equipment, some weights and so forth from the club. What are you actually doing to keep fit? Have you got a, a, a regime? Are you doing a routine? What's the... Yeah, we've, uh, we've got a great weights coach in Luke Mean and um, he just said, send me through the list of what you are able to take home from the club and um, I'll put together a program. Um, so he's put together a program for me with what I've got here at home. But um, every Saturday morning and tomorrow morning, we've got a band workout on Zoom. Um, oh, yeah. And then Saturday mornings, we do a down, celly up, push-up challenge on Zoom. So, oh, great. 
Uh, I think tonight there's a cycling one um, if you've got a wop bike or something on Zoom. Yeah. So clubs finding new things to keep the boys together and engage together. That's uh, great. While also having a fitness side of it. So it's been good. It's brilliant. We've always said that footy clubs are the best um, in times of crisis and uh, to have that kind of support around you just must give you a, a lot of solace, you know. So it's wonderful that uh, you're able to express that. Um, do you have any of the essentials at home with you at the moment? Mate, how are you going? Who's doing the shopping? Who's looking after you? Yeah, we um we've got what we need for a bit. Okay. Uh, He's here staying with me. Um, so yeah, that's been a big help. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm on board with HelloFresh. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't mind it. it. Gets delivered to your door. Um, it's got everything you need. So yeah, I'm on board with that. But oh, yeah, I'm good. Be good. The club was able to get us a fair bit of dunny roll before we left. So, uh, I'm safe on that. Yeah. <laughs> good. That's what was. That's where I was going with that. Um, are there any chores around the house? This is what I wonder. Uh, we alluded to before, but are there any chores around the house that you've decided to do, or there are things that you've been instructed to do by those that normally instruct you to do them? Yeah. I've. Um, do you want me to give you a look? Yeah, please, mate. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to. Thank you. Come for a tour. Excellent. So I uh, ripped up all the lawn. Right. Um, put in some new lawn out the front. So um, here we go. Oh, cool. So new lawn all irrigated, new garden shed. Oh, uh, mate, well done. Last week I put in um, these jasmine, star jasmine runners, so little hedge. Oh, fantastic. Up. And, um, yeah, so it's good, good weather this week. So the missus and I have decided to actually, we're going to have a crack at painting the whole house. So No way, <laughs> serious. Stay tuned, yeah. <laughs> this will be an instalment. I look forward to either uh, Instagram or Facebook updates on the house painting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It could make or break us. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, if anything is going to test you, mate, it's going to be this period. That's great. Yeah. Thanks for showing us that. Um, can I also ask you, have you been doing any, like, jigsaws, playing cards, uh, playing games, Xbox, PlayStation, that sort of thing? Or are you into any of that? Or Yeah, we, we had to go at Monopoly the other night. Oh, um, yeah, how'd that go? Yeah, I won, which I probably shouldn't <laughs> for a while, but um, it's good. I've been getting on the PlayStation, um, which is good, getting on the headset and the mic. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's something that's um, going to get announced in the next few days regarding all the AFL players across the comp. So oh, okay. That, that oh, good. Should keep people engaged and something to look at. Oh, um, great. And I've just been, my mates back in WA, I've just been playing um, a bit of PlayStation with them over the mic, so... Fantastic, yeah. good. Uh, what about streaming services, mate? They getting a workout as well. What are you watching? Um, what am I watching? I just finished um, uh, Money Heist. Oh yes, yeah. yeah it's that which is good. So I'm waiting for the new season to come out. Okay. Um, that's about it, really. Yeah. I haven't okay. Watched else. Did you see the Jack uh, Jack Rewalt uh, Lion? Um, <laughs> what was it? Uh, Tiger King. Oh, yeah, no. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very good. By who did that? Have you Have you delved into that at all? Have you? Had a yeah, look? I watched a bit of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. Get around um, who murdered the husband, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Everyone seems to be talking about it. We gave it a go the other night. I've only watched one episode. I thought that was enough for me, but um, <laughs> that's another story. Hey, what's the one thing you'll never take for granted again, Nathan? Oh, one thing I'll never take for granted. Um, I don't know. Probably just being able to hang in groups. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I love seeing the boys and just in general, I love entertaining people, getting people around for dinner, cooking a barbie, um, stuff like that. So, yeah, probably things like that when you can just go out and have a nice dinner or get people around for a barbie or get the boys around for a few beers. Yeah, perfect, yeah. mate. The simple things in life, really, I understand. Yeah. Is there um, anything you've decided to take up or complete? You know, like are you reading a book? Are you going to take up a new language? Have you got a hobby, learning to play an instrument, guitar, drums, triangle, whatever? Um, not a lot, probably just the things around the house that I haven't had time to do. Yeah, uh, yeah I put a real focus on trying to get those finished. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's probably nothing yet, but once these DIY jobs run out, I think yeah. I'm going to find something. And tell me the top you're wearing, it looks familiar. Um, give us a little bit of a, uh, a plug on that one. Uh, yeah, Spruce Vintage. So um, Kane Lambert and I started it, oh, we had it about 10 months ago now, but it's been up and running for about three months. Um, it's an online vintage clothing store, so oh, yeah. uh, we don't make the product. It's right. just your yeah, um, pre-existing brands like Tommy Hilfiger, Ralph Lauren, Nike, all yeah. that stuff. So, yeah, we just import it from around the world and, um, yeah, resell it again. So we've got a little website, um, sprucevintage.com, if you want to have a look. Fantastic. Um, yeah, it's good. It's been great, uh, actually, for this period. So 
um, while we've got nothing to do, this has been something that's been yeah. able to keep on running and keep going. So it came Beautiful. Off and, yeah, and, it and, and how do people find it? Yeah, they've been loving it. So far, everyone seemed to love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, a lot of all of our product comes internationally, so yeah. we we'll probably hit a little bit of halt at the moment with importing and that. But um, yeah, yeah we, we've got a little bit um, at Canes, which is good to go. So hopefully, we can keep putting some more drops out there for people. I should have rephrased that question. I was actually meaning, how do people find it? Where do they? How do they get oh, it? Oh, Log onto it. Yeah, so uh, it's all online based. Um, yeah, we do drops at the moment. We're doing our drops every Friday at five pm. So okay, it's vintage.com. Yep. Um, or Instagram, Spruce Vintage, yeah. Beautiful. Well done, mate. And the last question I just wanted to ask you in this little segment, how are you sleeping at the moment? How's your um, patterns? Everything good? Yeah, everything's good, yeah. yeah. The club um, made us put a real focus on um, sticking to routine. So, yeah, I'm trying to go to bed 8.39 every night and okay. up at 7. Um, so, yeah, it seems to be going all right. The missus is, um, yeah, she's been stealing the blanket off me most nights. So she's <laughs> What a King Luna, it's on its way today. Yeah, right. Oh, mate, you are being well looked after. Hey, listen, thanks so much for giving us a little bit of insight there. That was the segment called The Big Picture. It was proudly brought to you by The Big Picture people, the experts in home cinema. If you're currently in self-isolation, which is what we all should be doing, why not enjoy watching TV on a big screen? The Big Picture people are the experts in home cin cinema technology. Located in north, south, east and west of Melbourne, south around Cheltenham, Hoppers Crossing, Water Gardens, and for our friends in Queensland on the Gold Coast, Please put your hands together for Nathan Broad. Pictures of you, pictures of me, <laughs> that was great, mate. I uh, love that little bit of insight. Really appreciate it. Uh, what, we, what we want to do now is just for the uh, Richmond fans that probably know enough about you, but there may be some that don't, we're just going to find out a little bit more in a segment we call What About Me? Beautiful, mate. Very quick questions here. Uh, where did you grow up, Nathan? Uh, I grew up in Dongra, Western Australia, a little uh, cray fishing town. Okay. How far out of WA, like uh, Western uh, Australia? Three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. Okay. Um, who did you grow up barracking for? Uh, the Bombers just followed the old man's suit there. Yeah. Okay. And who was your favourite footballer when you were growing up? Uh, James Hurd. James Hurd. Uh, what is your frame of mind before a game of footy, mate? Are you relaxed? Are you anxious, nervous, calm? Which one are you? Uh, I'm very relaxed. Nick yeah. Lawson and I, um, we're probably too relaxed. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we take it very easy before games. Nice. Um, what, what, would, what would you have been doing if footy didn't come along? Uh, I was actually a plumber. Being a mature age picker, I was a plumber for two and a half years okay. um, before being drafted. So, yeah, yeah, I'd say I would still be a plumber, I'd say. Okay. And uh, do you have a pet, mate? <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, cool. Where? Hey. There he is. Oh, how fantastic. <laughs> On a crochet yeah, rug, yeah, too. Old, as you can see. Oh, mate, that's fantastic. How, uh, name? Uh, Charlie, little French bulldog. He's oh, two. Yeah. yeah, right. And he's been with you since you got him as a pup? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's right. Been Yes, since they went gold, so. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, can you tell me your best ever game of footy that you've ever played? Is there one that springs to mind for you, Nathan? Uh, oh, I had a good game against Adelaide. I had about 20 touches in the first half and then yeah. broke my eye socket. So, oh, that's so, uh, yeah. the game, so it was the best and the worst. Yeah, but, right. Yeah, no, I'm not sure. There's not, not been too many of them. Yeah, down. okay. That's all right. Hey, what's the one food or the one restaurant that you're going to miss eating at the moment? The one food from that restaurant or what's the one food you're going to meet, miss eating the most during this period? Um, oh, Japanese, I'd say. I'd love oh, my Japanese. Oh, yeah? Where do you normally go for that? You can give them a plug. Yeah, Okami on Station Street. It's $36 all you can eat. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Yeah, all right. I'm, I'm the same. I ask the question to all the boys, obviously, because that is one of the questions. Ours is Japanese as well. And we get down to Kampai down in South Yarra, and I can't wait to get back there. Yeah, no, I'm the same. Hang it out for it, mate. That was brilliant, mate. Thank you very much. That was our segment called What About Me? There you go. Hey, this is a nice way to break up the day, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> exactly. Uh, what we want to do here, mate, I'm going to introduce this segment. This is the, uh, the last one of our uh, questionnaire type segments. It's called What Can I Say? If 
If only you could see what I'm seeing. Dan Sandy's <laughs> over there dancing in the kitchen, um, which is just bizarre in itself. Um, so what I wanted to do now, mate, this, seg this segment, as I said, is called What Can I Say? I just want to go through a couple of questions with you. You can do one-word answers or you can elaborate a little bit further if you like. Um, which one of these things gets you the most pumped before a game? Is it the smell of deep heat, fresh-cut grass, pulling on the jumper, strapping on the boots, a footy in your hands or the sound of the crowd? Oh, probably the fresh cut grass. I love my lawn. Oh, beautiful. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Do you like running through the banners? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> no? Okay. All right. One word to describe Richmond Football Club supporters. Oh, amazing. Amazing. All right. Which AFL club do you, do you dislike the most? Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide. Uh, in the future, would you prefer to play in a day or a twilight grand final? No, stick to traditional day. All right. If you were to describe yourself as a, as a car, what sort of a car would you be? Probably a high luxurious, very dour, slow, but can go all day. Excellent. <laughs> well said, mate. Who's the funniest bloke down at the club? Oh, there's not many funny blokes. There's blokes who think they're funny. <laughs> um, oh, probably Jaden Short thinks he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I've, yeah, heard, I've heard that. I've heard that. Uh, who's the most manicured down at the club? Oh, Jaden Short again. Yeah, really? Wow. Yeah, he has okay. his own clippers in his locker that he shaves probably twice every second day. No way. Yeah. Fantastic. Who's a bit tight with money at the club? Oh, it was Dan Butler, but he's gone to Saints because he wanted more money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, perfect. Now I'd probably say... Probably Kane Lambert. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's, that's a nice one. <laughs> Brilliant. Who down at the club has got the most swagger? Uh, Shay Bolton. By Shay, far. Yeah, that's the third time his name's come up. That's yeah, interesting. $5,000 runners a idiot, so. Yeah, right, okay. Um, what does being an AFL footballer mean to you? Oh, an opportunity, probably. Yeah, yeah. good. Excellent. Nice. Um, what's your favourite ground to play on around Australia, apart from the MCG? Apart from the MCG. Um, probably Opera Stadium now. It's got a pretty... They've done well there. Yeah, great atmosphere by the looks of it. Yeah, um, yeah. Playing for the Richmond Football Club is? Oh, a very grateful opportunity. Good on you, mate. What's better, mark or goal of the year? Oh, goal would be all right because I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Who does their hair the most at the club? Um, oh... Shorty again. Shorty again. Wow. I love it. He's getting, he's been run over a few times on this bus. Um, yeah, he it. <laughs> who would most likely, who would be most likely to drop their name at a nightclub in order to gain free entry? Liam Baker. Liam Baker. He's been thrown under the bus a few times too. I like that. Um, who's the most, f most famous person you have ever met? Ever met? Oh. Um, geez, I don't know. I've met too many famous people. Um, probably Brian Lara. Okay, yeah, good. Nice, yep. all right. Who's the most famous person you have in your phone? Ah, uh, well, oh. geez. I don't know, it's a good question. Not many. Not many. <laughs> One of the boys, probably. Yeah, let's go with that. Dustin Martin there. Uh, uh, what is the one thing you're going to miss the most over this period of isolation? Oh, seeing the boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Um, yeah, I hear you. Uh, what do you think when you see a poster or merchandise of yourself? Oh, it's bad luck for anyone <laughs> who looks at it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love your honesty. Uh, what is your reaction when you see a kid with your number on their back? It must have been uh, White. He went to Port Adelaide. He was a previous 35. <laughs> <laughs> mate, you got to love that honesty. That's bloody brilliant, mate. That was a segment called What Can I Say? Oh, well done, Bar. Love it. All right, champ, here we go. This is our last little segment here. What I did, um, as I explained off the top to you uh, before we came on air, was just to say I've got the F Richmond Football Club fans to get in contact with us via Facebook during the week. Um, and just pose three questions to us that they would like to ask you. Um, the best question is voted by you. Uh, the person that actually wins it is going to get a footy sent out to them. All right? So we're going to look after them in that way. Um, they get to choose between a red or a yellow ball. All right? So that's uh, up to you who gets that. 
So I'll ask you these three questions and you just give me uh, the one that you think is the best. Here's our first one. This, this is uh, actually brought to you by uh, our, our really lovely sponsors down at Buffalo Sports. And what uh, Hannah Cleland would like to know, she'd like to know, um, after your 2017 celebration, what was your 2019 celebration like? Um, more family orientated. Okay. Um, yeah, I was able to... 17 was pretty hectic and all about. I probably forgot about my family a bit. Yep. Uh, where 19 was good, all the boys were able to spend more time with their family and let the family enjoy it as much as we did. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit I found best about 19. That's great, mate. Excellent answer. Uh, Matt Ainton, uh, he wants to know who was possibly the worst driver at the Richmond Football Club? I've got a funny story about this, actually. Oh, good. <clears throat> so, Love these. Riley Collier Dawkins, um, we're having a few beers um, one night and Riley wasn't having any so he was driving us um, away and it was me, myself, Jack Rewalt and Tom Lynch in the car Right. and he puts it in drive turns the lights on and then goes to go and he's, it's not going anywhere it's not going anywhere right. and the car's not on, he goes, no, 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 the lights are on and like he hadn't turned the car on it was in bloody <laughs> parking or ignition or whatever so then he finally turns it on leaves it still, the lights in parking ignition light things, so he's yeah. driving off with no lights on, pitch black Oh, he's a very bad driver. Horrific. Oh, no. Should not oh. have his license. Should not have his license. Yeah, doesn't sound good. That's not a promising one. Um, Nicole Calver, she's got a question. She would like to know, if there was a place you would rather be right now, where is it? Um, oh, probably back home on the coast. Okay. Yeah. Probably doing oh, a bit of surfing or? Yeah, a bit of fishing. Yeah. Weather. Um, yeah, you can't beat it. Yeah, good, mate. All right, well, these are three questions. Which one did you like the most? Uh, first one was a good question about 17, 19. Beautiful. Hannah Cleland. Hannah Cleland, we'll be in contact with you via um, Instagram, via Facebook, via um, uh, email in order to let you know that you've actually won that. So well done, Hannah. Thanks very much. That was our best question of the week. Thanks to our friends down at Buffalo Sports. That was called Knowing Me, Knowing You. Bye. Better get that one in. Knowing yeah. me. All right, there we go. Um, now, what I'd normally do with, if I had you on the show, Nathan, you'd be sitting right here next to me on the desk and you'd have a look around, the audience would be out there, you'd have, Sandy would bring up the barrel. Uh, we'd put it on the desk and then you'd reach in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give away the prizes for the barrel, out of the barrel. So would you mind just reaching into the barrel for me? Oh, how good is that? Fantastic, brilliant. All right, what do we got? Here comes our first winner. Um, this is for the $150 that's good for footy, Hamper World Hamper, uh, brought to us, obviously, by Hamper World. That goes to Sharon Daly. So congratulations, Sharon. Well done. Uh, that's our first prize. Uh, we've got three other prizes. The second prize is the game size football. Uh, that's been drawn by Nathan earlier. We've got this all prepared, don't worry. Uh, second prize game ball is uh, to Marilyn Waits. Congratulations, Marilyn. Third prize junior football goes to Sharon Perdue. Congratulations, Sharon. You're getting golf claps here in the background from Nathan. Um, and the fourth prize junior football goes to Gail Sanders. Hey, all right, well done. Um, if you'd like to participate in the That's Good for Footy raffle, it's really simple to do so. All you've got to do is go to the That's Good for Footy Facebook page, click on the link, or go to the That's Good for Footy website. Uh, you can go into the draw. It's easy to participate. Tickets are $2 each or 6 for 10 bucks. You get the chance to win as first prize the $150 footy hamper, which is brought to you by Hamper World, and then obviously the football. So it's very easy to do so. You can register any time you like by purchasing your tickets. They all go into the, uh, the draw in order to win. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, now, we've come to basically the end of that. The shows are recorded in front of no one, in front of no one at my house, apart from Sandy. She's in the kitchen. She's waving now. Um, if you'd like to know more about how to get along to the shows when we are back, you can get onto the That's Good for Footy website at www.thatsgoodforfooty.com.au. This is where you'll find all things related to That's Good for Footy. You can donate, you can purchase raffle tickets, you can sign up, or you can even purchase That's Good for Footy merchandise. Links to all of these things are also available on the That's Good for Footy Facebook page. Can I now get you to please put your hands together for Nathan Broad from the Richmond Football Club. <laughs> That's Sandy again. She's loving it. Um, mate, I just wanted to say to you, uh, 
thanks very much for allowing us into your house. Thanks for giving up your time. I don't mean to impose or encroach, but I just thought it'd be great if we could put some connectivity back into this, what is a pretty tough time for everyone out there at the moment. So I can't thank you enough for making yourself available, mate. Really no appreciate worries. it. Great work. Keep it up. You're doing a good job. Thanks, brother. I wanted to ask, is there anything you wanted to say to the Richmond fans while you've got the opportunity? Uh, just, just hang in there. Um, we don't know how long it's going to be, but when we do get the chance to come back, um, we promise that we're keeping fit, we're keeping strong, um, we're doing everything right. So um, when we get back to playing, we promise we'll put on a show and put our best foot forward. Oh, well said, mate. i got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> well done, brother. Hey, listen, that was fantastic, mate. I can't wait to see you back out on the field again. It'll be great to see the Tiger Army come along and support the Tigers when you are back out there. Um, look after yourself, look after your partner, look after your, your dog. Um, good luck painting the house. Enjoy all the chores you've got to do in this in this time of isolation. But as I said, we can't wait to see you back out there. Thanks so much for your time, Nathan. No worries. Thanks, Damo. And you're doing a good job, mate. Keep thanks, it up. thanks, brother. Appreciate it. You have a great day. We'll speak you soon. Too. Sounds good. Cheers, buddy. All right. That's good for footy panel shows. Would not be possible without the support of the following sponsors. Those sponsors would not be able to continue without your support. They do not give us any funding, but do uh, give us support by just in the means of prize content. And for this, I'd just like to tell them thank you. The big picture people, the experts in smart home cinema, the cheesecake shop, baked in store, big swing golf, the ultimate indoor golf experience, Hogs Breath Cafe, Australia's Steakhouse, Burley Seacombe, your first stop for AFL merchandise, Buffalo Sports, a recognised name in sports since 1972, the Framing Queen, quality affordable framing, the Comics Lounge, Australia's premier comedy venue, Oscarts Racing, the only place to race, Broker Rocher helping you make an impression. All right, what I'd now like to do is I've incorporated a new segment into the show, which is called Help. I'll open up the doors. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. All right, now Help is basically an opportunity for businesses to get in contact with us at That's Good for Footy, and we'll help promote you um, with your business on the show. We know it's tough out there and we want to help you. Uh, if you want to get involved in any number of ways, you can. You can become a segment sponsor or a prize sponsor within the show, just like some of the sponsors I just read out. It's easy to get involved. Simply go to the That's Good For Footy website, contact us page, and let us see what we can do for you. All right, well, there you go. That's it. Um, cheers to everyone out there. Be kind, be considerate, be polite, be respectful of others. You've been watching the That's Good For Footy panel show. My name is Damien. Thank you and good night.